out of South Central, Los Angeles, California. Here is the former eight-time amateur national champion, the undefeated, the up-and-coming prospect, Diego Pacheco. Pacheco. Seconds on. Okay, guys, we're over the rules in the dressing room. This is a little high. I'm gonna work, let them work to here. A little high. I'm gonna let them work to here. Okay. I, you know what I expect out of you. Let's touch them up and let's go to work. Gerard White, the third man in the ring, and this is a good one. Undefeated, going after each other. Diego Pacheco, South Central, Los Angeles, but he brings a crowd, and you can hear them here in Fresno, California. Our last fight on Before the Bell, brought to you by Matchroom Boxing, Justin Duran. And Chris Algieri with you, and you see the difference in height. Pacheco six foot four with those blue and red trunks. You know, interesting matchup here. We don't really know much about Lucas De Abreu. Yeah. You, know, you bring up these Brazilian power punchers. Is the power real, or have they been fighting soft touches the whole the whole career? So you don't really know what to expect here. Think Brazil right away. Name pops up. Popo Fritas. Popo. Popo Fritas, one of my favorite fighters. Was always in a scrap. Always in a scrap. Always gave it all. Diego Pacheco. You're gonna hear a lot of Vamos Diego because he has fans all over the ballpark. Nice style, but they're bringing him along very nicely. As in, no soft touches, but no hard ones either. It's like a, that fine balance of where they want to get him rounds for Diego Pacheco. Well, I, mean, I think they see the potential in him, which is obvious, but you know, it's a good way. There's no rush. He's talented. He's going to get there. You got to learn the ropes, especially when you're learning on the job as a pro in a very dangerous sport. Moves very well for a guy six foot four. A lot of times, those taller guys don't have that fluidity to them. Diego Pacheco does. Pacheco uh, spars with David Benavides. Oof and Gabe Rosado. So he's been getting work with Freddie Roach's wild card gym. No, no easy days there either. Oh. We, mess, we mentioned Castaño in the last fight, sparring with him, sparring with David Benavides. It's a hard day at the office. And not too long ago, Benavides was the 20 year old that everybody was talking about. Now it's Diego Pacheco. So he'll fill you out a couple rounds, let his hands go towards the middle has been his tendency. See him establishing that jab. He's moving backwards, but not giving up a lot of ground. Combination there. At six foot four, you use that jab, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you should always use your jab. But if you if you got that height and range advantage like Pacheco does, better use that jab. There, Bray, who came into the venue. Just his trainer, looked around. He went into the, the, as they would say, the visiting clubhouse here at the baseball field. He was looking for his name and like, no, you don't have your own locker. <laughs> uh, he was in there with everybody else, like Sonny Duverson and the other guys, and looked around and said, okay, I guess I'm gonna uh, get a corner. He's like, yep, that's exactly what you do. Soon enough, Diego Pacheco and Dale Bray will have their own lockers. Things work out for them. Abreu, as we said, 12 and 0, 11 knockouts. A bit of a knockout artist, if you will. But again, we don't know against what kind of opposition. Ah! Seems like he can fight a little bit, though. No. Bit of a feel out round for both these guys. Coming out, a lot of jab work, especially from Pacheco. A couple attempts by De Abreu, but not much, much landed. There we see a nice overhand chopping right hand from Pacheco. Sick little defense there. Both men attempting to land big shots, but not a whole lot of leather landed just yet. Scheduled for eight rounds. Our final bout here on Before the Bell. Brought to you by Matchroom Boxing. The main event tonight, 
Mikey Garcia. You can watch that on the zone. And before that, the co-feature Mark Castro making his debut in Phoenix. He's 3-0. Elwin Soto, Jonathan Gonzalez, La Pulga against La Bomba. Jesse Rodriguez, Bam Rodriguez taking on Nino Burgos, Mexico. Two, two. And Texas and Brock Jarvis, Australian, will be the fight next here on the zone. Here's our final one here before the bell. And you're asking about, all right, so who's Lucas Abreu? 12-0, 11 KOs, but the opposition hasn't exactly been the strongest. It's his first fight in the U.S. since he made his pro debut in 2016. After that, he went back to Brazil. It's also his first fight in the ring since 2019, so almost two years out of the ring. And how did he get into boxing? He started late, the age of 15. He was watching Rocky. <laughs> Common story. Yeah. You know, for Brazilians who love their soccer, let me watch Rocky and become a boxer. Oh, nice right hand by Pacheco. Brave's favorite fighter, Mike Tyson. Interesting. He represented Brazil, all over the world. He's fought in Russia many times, Chile, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. For Pacheco, this is his last scheduled eight round fight after this, he goes up to 10 rounds. He turns 21 in March. Said so my goal, to be fighting for a world title by the time he's 22. He's got to find somebody to dance with him. There's a Brio just moving around the ring in the black. Yeah, Brio, Brio is eating a lot of jabs on the outside, not able to figure out the puzzle with Pacheco at this point. Brio starting to settle down. You see him cutting off the ring well, closing that distance, setting his feet as well, too. I think we're going to see some big bombs from Pacheco pretty soon. Yeah. But the way you have that right hand caught Oof. you back. Beautiful jabs. Yeah, I've heard some of the sparring sessions have just been fantastic for Pacheco. Of course, it's sparring, but when you're going up against Benavides and Gabe Rosado, you're doing work. Yeah, when you're a young guy like Pacheco, those are the sparring sessions that you really cut your te teeth on and, and makes you the fighter that you're going to be. He's also been in camp with Canelo. As Canelo's getting ready for Callum Smith. Oh, that guy, just Canelo? Yeah. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Only the pound for pound best fighter in the world today. As uh, Pacheco said, it's not the sparring, it's the confidence of knowing what I'm doing. It's going to be rolled to slip. Their feet tangled up. Referee jumping on it right away. You know, to that point that Pacheco said, that you just said about Pacheco, yeah, it's, it's, it's that knowledge and that understanding that you belong. That you can hang, right? Yeah, yeah. I had a similar situation with me when I went out to Las Vegas. I actually sparred with Canelo as well when I was about 9 or 10 and 0, and under made me understand that I belonged and I, I could be world champion. And that's also when you see, okay, there's levels to this, right? Oh, yeah. Well, he was 19 at the time, so he wasn't quite the, <laughs> the guy he is now. Well, you know, Mexico, you turn pro at 15, bro. He's a long, he's a savvy vet at 19. Oh, he had 30, 33 <laughs> fights at the time. Exactly. Dominant round for Pacheco. Better at cutting off the ring in round number two. Was really finding the range with his jab. Starting to let his power punches go. There we saw the little mix up with the feet. But a very dominant round for Pacheco. You see him starting to settle in, get his feet underneath him. Letting those power punches go, not just the jab. Las Calenas, Pastor Lopez, he's a combo. DJ Gun Groove. DJ's getting into Groove here in Fresno. I, mean, I requested some Oasis in Morrissey, but he was, didn't have that. What's your Ringwalk song, Chris Algeri? Eric B and Rakim, Don't Sweat the Technique. Nice. Very nice. Then my walkout for every single boxing match I've had, 28 of them. Love it. Love it. Third round of action scheduled for eight, Diego Pacheco. 20 year old, he's got the blue with the red trim, South Central, TG Boxing, where he works out of. Cur yeah. Curious to see how Pacheco matures, how yeah. that bot, he, he, can, he can carry super middleweight, light heavyweight even. Now, I wonder where he's gonna end up size-wise, weight-class-wise. Yeah. 
Big frame, long arms, wide shoulders. A lot of room to grow. Literally and figuratively. So Brilliant. Looking around. Just doesn't look comfortable at all. No, no, and I, I, I understand why. It's been yeah. the jab. But the jab of Pacheco has been very consistent and landing pretty heavy as well. The power punches haven't landed just yet, but Pacheco seems to be angling and positioning himself for those big shots. It looks like Pacheco feels like, I can do what I want right now. I feel like he needs to make the, not make the same mistake that the opener, Oscar Allen Perez made, you know, where he had the guy in control mm -hmm. and kind of lulled himself into just staying there instead of hitting that next gear and getting the guy out of there. Pacheco, only 20 years old. He, he's been around the scene for a while, though. He snapped back the head of the Brazilian. Remember, he fought a couple years ago in the Forum in Los Angeles early. I walk in there as a fan, and I see his shirts everywhere. I'm like, wait a minute, is this guy, who, who's this kid? I'd heard of him. Ooh, good right hand there for Brazilian. And you'll see him around the Southern California boxing scene. He goes to all the fights. He's like a, a boxing fan, takes pictures with everybody, and he, I saw him to a good friend of mine, the ace, who went up to him and said, hey, bro, how you doing? Thanks, how, how you been? He, he, the guy's like, wait a minute, I'm a fan. You're, you're the boxer. He's like, oh, no, but you go to the fights. I go to the fights. He's a big boxing fan. And sat back oh. to right. Oh, that's what Abreu was feeling. And now you see why Abreu's staying away. That was a hard shot right on the jaw of Day Abreu. Oh, Abreu back with a counters with one. OK. Still in this fight. Oh. But yeah, I love that, uh, Beto. The, the, these young guys who are still fans of the sport, I, I feel like we miss a lot of that. A lot of, a lot of these young guys don't, don't study the sport, don't know the fighters of the past, don't stay up with what's going on. It's cool to see a, a young guy like Diego Pacheco be a fan of his job. And I tell people, like, hey, that, that guy right there, keep an eye on him. If everything works out well, Patrick likes him. Invest in him. Matchroom likes him. I like him. You like him. Ah. <laughs> the it's fans just, like him. He's easy to root for. He's a good kid. Yeah. You know. I mean, you've been around the boxing scene, so there's some kids you meet and you're like, yeah. Yep. Got something to him. And then there's other kids you meet and you're like, yeah. Yeah. Going nowhere. Yep. I'm curious. It's curious. Funny you say that. I've rarely been wrong <laughs> in those situations. Oh, big right, right hand, hand over the top. That was one of the right hands. There was another one right on the draw, that one. You just seem like Pacheco is starting to hone in. Mm -hmm. Fine tuning those shots, getting getting the target where he wants it. Let's see if he can step it up here. Put some more hurt on the Brazilian. Fresno, California is where we are. Chuck Chancy Field, home of the Fresno Grizzlies, minor league baseball team, single A, Rockies affiliate. So we, it's been Diego Pacheco controlling, headed to the fourth round. It's scheduled for eight. So when you know you're controlling the fight, Chris Algeri, you know you can do what you want. When do you go for it? Now. <laughs> okay. All right. As soon as you say that, now. Okay. Um, so at this point, like, if, for example, for myself, or even if I'm, I'm coaching a young fighter, this is when you start trying things out. These are learning grounds, even though they're fights. You know, you're coming up in the career, you're young. This is where you try the things that you've been doing in the gym. Because there's always that transition from what you do on the bag and on, with the mitts to what you do in sparring, and then taking what you do in sparring and doing it on fight night. And when you are in control like that, what does that feel like? You're the man. Yeah. You're the man. You know, you, you understand that, listen, this can change at any moment because this is boxing. Yeah. But, you know, when you're in your groove and you're feeling you feeling your flow, there's nothing like it. Yeah, just moving away from that. He saw that overhand right coming. Super smooth. Oh, counters with the left of Pacheco. Good uppercut hook Quick, combination. Huh? Yeah, real sharp. Nice and tight for being six foot four. And that's what I said at the, you know, at the opening. It's impressive to see such a tall, long, athletic guy. Good right hand. Good right hand, and Abreu pushes him down. Abreu's tough. He took some big shots so far. Abreu's realizing, hey, my, my record might be undefeated, but yeah, it was padded. 
Levels, 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 levels. You know, uh, De Abreu just looks out of his depth at yeah. this point. He and has for several rounds. Yeah, very defensive as Abreu in black, the Brazilian fighter. And not seeing that power, the nine knockouts, or the 11 knockouts and 12 wins, excuse me. Not seeing that. I was, I didn't see much of it either. I was looking on YouTube, like, hey, trying to find the fights. And like, not much of Abreu out there in this day and age. Yeah, but I just mean in general tonight, yeah, exactly. even in the ring, I'm not seeing it. But power is tricky. Yes, it is. You know, some guys, they just got it. They don't look like they hit hard, but they do. And vice versa. Chris Algeria says the level, so Abreu's learning this. Diego Pacheco trying to take the next Ooh. level. That overhand right landing again. Flush. Love those straight right hands over the top from Pacheco. That and the jab have been very consistent. Yeah, Abreu is coming in, but it's defensively coming in. Yeah, he's not really even putting any pressure with his body movement, even if he can't keep up. Now he's in the southpaw stance, probably because nothing's working on the orthodox stance. Now he goes back to orthodox. And final seconds of the fourth round. Diego Pacheco controlling this fight. South Central mm, another doing whatever he wants. Snaps back the head of the Brazilian. Nice double right hand there. Ooh, and Abreu comes back, deep breath. Big side. Another dominant round for Diego Pacheco. Came out snapping that jab, but it's really been the story of the right hands the last two rounds. Pacheco's been stepping up the pressure. There we see a uppercut hook combination. There's that right hand I've been talking about. A little slapping shot on the inside from the Brazilian. Oh. Bang, big right hand pops the head back of Debreu. And then at the end of the round, a double right hand, just like that. Sent Debreu back to the corner. Not looking. He too, took too happy. two big breaths, got to the corner, and sat down as soon as he could. It's one thing to be outclassed. Yep. It's another thing to be tired and outclassed. So, all right, I'm asking again, does Pacheco go for it now after the way he finished that round? You know, there hasn't been much coming back his way, so I, it seems like it was a this would be a good opportunity for that. But who knows, you know. Pacheco felt a couple shots early. Yep. Maybe Abreu, De Abreu does hit that hard, and he's just being cautious and trying to weaken his man a little more before he takes him out. TG Boxing is where he works out in South Central. Diego Pacheco. Oh, oh he's loading up. Abreu is oh. trying to slip him when he does. He drops that right hand like Oof. a hammer. Abreu might want to keep that left hand up a little bit. It's down near his waist. And Pacheco's been landing that overhand right. Smooth defense there by Pacheco. Even for a tall guy, he was able to get under that shot very nicely. Jab from Pacheco, stiff, faint. The Pacheco crowd started to make some noise for their fighter. Debri is, is letting his hand, his right hand go. There that, it is. That's again, the one. In this round. Has he thrown a combo in this fight, Abreu? Uh, I do not believe so. No, it's been one at a time, right? Yes. Oh, there's a combo from Pacheco. The crowd started to ooh and sense something. Oh, oh that quick hook from Pacheco, the one that Chris Algeri really likes. Yes, I love that left hook. And it hasn't been much thrown from Pacheco at this point. He's been, everything has been ones and twos, straight jabs and right hands, but beautiful left hook counter shot there. It's so quick. For yeah, very short. Very short shot for a tall guy. That's the kind of stuff you see from the 108 pounders, right? The little guy, not 6'4. Fresno, California, the sun beating down in the middle of the ring. Diego Pacheco controlling this fight against the Brazilian De Abreu. Fifth round, scheduled for eight. Both of them undefeated, but you see the different levels. Diego Pacheco. Looking real smooth, in total control at this point. Pretty much making everything work. This Pacheco. Jab followed by a right. Pacheco throws one punch, but it's always followed with another one. 
That's just that ring awareness mm -hmm. being so comfortable. You know, even though he's young, he's very experienced. We talked about the sparring earlier. That matters. That affects your ability to think in the ring. So when you go in that sparring, you're like, okay, I'm not the man here right now. I'm here to give them work, but you got to hold your own or else you don't get invited, right? Listen, everyone gets humbled in the sport at some point. Ooh, big right hand. Right hands like that will humble you real quick. Fifth round, winding down in Fresno. Before the bell, Diego Pacheco controlling this fight. Go to the six. And Abreu, another. Another big inhalation. Big overhand shopping right hand from Diego Pacheco early in round number four. Nice little defense there. Dips under a big looping shot from David Abreu. Oof. Big with the left hook to the body there. There's that counter check hook on the way out. That landed very cleanly. Abreu's tough. He's taking some big shots. He's taking them well. Hasn't been really wobbled or hurt too badly, but still three more rounds to go. Diego Pacheco, Lucas de Abreu from Itapira, Sao Paulo, Brazil. He's 12-0, 11 KOs, but he's in very, very tough against Diego Pacheco, who's controlling this fight. Pacheco landing the bigger shots, the bigger bombs. De Abreu hasn't landed anything. Oh, oh, big right from Pacheco to open up the round. So, oh. that, so that spray of sweat the flying been, to the third round, yeah. third, third, uh, third row, rather. If he would have had the long locks like Nikita Ababe, we've seen the hair flying. Stop, stop. So now you've been landing the big shots, Pacheco. Chris Algieri, what do you tell him? How do you end this? I think he's got to get behind the jab, get more consistent with it. Um, you know, close that distance. He started out doing that great early on. He just didn't follow up. I think now, right, like that. Like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right on cue. I right. think you heard me. We're not too far from the ring. He heard you. He's got great coaches, so I'm sure they were saying something of a similar sentiment. Oh, good try there. Like that uppercut, uppercut lands. Mm -hmm. Oh, good heart, stiff jab. Hi, Pacheco. Dale Bray with mouth wide open now. Bray's tough, man. He's taking, yeah. he's taking big shots. He's still in there. He's throwing back. Can't really muster up much offense, but. It's hard against Pacheco. Yeah. But you know, the guy's got a guy six foot four in front of you. With a hammer. Who moves well. Oh, another oh. big right from Pacheco. My goodness, the Brazilian can wear. Jeez. Tough, tough kid. I mean, they're landing flush. And it's been consistent. Every yeah. round, he's got hit with a big right hand. Two big rights in this sixth round. It's scheduled for eight. Uppercut from Pacheco. Now the Abreu holding for the first time. Yeah, there's nothing behind the punches of the Abreu. The shot from Pacheco taking a toll. Mm. Another solid right. This one partially blocked by the Abreu. There it is again. He throws that right with bad intentions. Oh, at will is he landing at this point. That last one might have shook Abreu up a little bit. Diego takes a deep breath, so it's hot in that ring. It's 85 degrees here in Fresno. Nice. Sun beating on them. You can see the sun beating on their shoulders. Oh, good right hand there from Abreu. There we go. If you're in his corner, like, okay, we, we get one. That might keep Pacheco a little honest. A little bit. Maybe. Oops. Maybe not. <laughs> Solid round for Diego Pacheco, landing the big overhand rights as we head towards the seventh round here in Fresno, California, before the bell on Matchroom Boxing.
Very smooth, sharp work from the undefeated Diego Pacheco. The story of this round was right hands. Right hand if the right hand seemed to be landing at will. Chopping over the top pretty much every time there was any kind of middle or long distance. Pacheco seemed to be able to hone in on that right hand. There you see the difference too. So Pacheco in the shade, Abreu eating big shots Sits in the sun. Sits in the sun. Hey, I mean, we're not trying to make it too big of a deal, but in the seventh round, after you've been eating that, you just want to, like, hey, any little bit helps. Better, brother. Life ain't fair, Beto. <laughs> Neither is boxing. Mm, especially <laughs> boxing. Especially boxing, people. That's the voice of Chris Algieri, Beto Duran, and you. Before the bell on matchroom boxing, the main event tonight, Mikey Garcia. This one's all Diego Pacheco. Now it's, can he put away the Brazilian? Lucas Abreu. Good stiff jab there. Oh, oh. big right hand. Big, big right hands from him. Abreu out of that southpaw stance, try to Tricky little lead hand uppercut. Kind of a weird, weird shot. Downright lethal punches from oh, Diego Pacheco. Oh, oh. Nice shot shortening yeah. up the shots on the inside. That's the tweet from Chops Box. Lethal. You're right, Chops Box. Jake Donovan checking in, also watching us. Oof. Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Oof. Oof. Just missing. Ryan O'Hara and the 303 watching us. Appreciate everybody sending the tweets. And it's obviously all the tweets are favorable for Diego Pacheco. It's, it's a matter of what this young man can do. Mm. Uppercut this time. Good counter uppercut. Oh, yeah. Now, here we go. This is stepping on the... Put punches together. And Abreu, he's trying to survive. He's got the hands up now. Last round, he did it. This round, he does. Big breaths coming from yep. Abreu as well. Stop. There hasn't been much holding in this fight, which has been good for Pacheco to get the space and land his shots. No, it's been, it's been a very clean matchup. Pacheco's been able to really use his length and boxing skills. Abreu, Abreu's not bad. You know, no. he's, he's tough. Very, very tough. Very, very tough. He's in Spanish, aguanta. You can take it. Man. So now if you're an opponent, you're like, wait a minute, is Ooh. Diego Pacheco doing that? Back-to-back -back overhand rights? Yeah, I love that double right-hand combination that he's been throwing. Oh, snap in the back of the head of the Brazilian, Diego Pacheco. Leg, oh. The legs felt that one. Yeah, the he's Brazilian bouncing out the toes, Chris Algieri. He's unsteady. Oh, sending him back. I think it's It'd be okay if the corner looks out for his fighter right now. Diego Pacheco just stepping on it. Corner or the ref. Somebody. At this point. The biggest punishment that Abreu suffered in his young career, but it's a lot of Diego Pacheco. He's a special young man. You know, he, Abreu at this point hasn't won a single second no. of this fight. He's taking bigger and bigger shots. It's not even competitive anymore now. No, I think if I think if Pacheco puts a, a string of punches together, he can get this he fight in. Yeah. At any point. Look at the way Abreu's coming back. He's just walking really slow, sitting down really slow. Yeah, his body language doesn't look good. Yeah. I mean, you're a warrior. You want to keep on fighting. But my goodness. And the punches from Diego Pacheco have been heavy the entire afternoon. Especially the last few rounds. Yep. He's really been picking up the, uh, the power, the intensity, the, the, the accuracy. Taking a hard look at the corner now of the undefeated Dea Abreu. Dominant round from Diego Pacheco, pretty much from bell to bell. Putting more pressure on, throwing combinations, doubling up the right hand, landing both. Every time he caught his man on the ropes, let punches go. Fought more on the inside in this round, was able to shorten up those punches to much effect. 
I like that. I like to see a guy who can fight on the outside and the inside. Yep. So the eighth and final round between Diego Pacheco and Lucas De Abreu. Can Pacheco end it? Can Abreu survive, which is what he's been trying to do the last couple rounds. Pacheco stepping on the gas. As he said, this is going to be his last eight round fight. He's going 10 for his next one. And you know, from his pace, I think it, it'll it'll benefit him in the 10 round distance. He'll have more time, more time to score, more time to, to build up points, more time to do damage. He's looked very sharp here tonight. You hear the Let's Go Diego crowd, South Central representing, but he's got fans all over. Right, left, the Pacheco crowd making noise. Abreu, very tough, very game. But he's just been too much Diego Pacheco. My Jim, we would call this sharp and smart. Mm. Sharp and smart throughout. Do damage, don't get hit. That's boxing. Hit and don't be hit. Pacheco might have been hit what, once? Yeah, Fl he, flush? He got a couple times, but a lot of them he rolled with. Mm -hmm. You know, they were on the end of the punches. Oh, oh and that's what he felt. Okay. Right on cue. All right. And that's Took the Abreu game. Yeah, that was a big shot. You know, we kind of alluded to that earlier. So maybe, well, maybe he does have some pop, and that's why Diego was being a little more cautious early on in the fight. We might have got our answer right there. There's one. Pacheco, he wants to fight soon. Another one, that other attitude of like four or five fights a year, let's go. If you give them to me, I'll take them. But now it's going to be which gatekeeper, which journeyman is going to be willing to get in there. Because you're watching this, you're like, okay, that, that kid cracks. Um, I'm going to need more money. Yeah, yes, that's the thing. Building a prospect takes money, takes capital. But, you know, Diego has Natrum behind him. Yep. So. It's not like he's building his own career at this point. Yeah, of course. It's in the hands of a great team. A lot of things that Pacheco can work on because you're 20 years old, you know, figuring some things out with your defense and what are you going to do? Oh, and there oh. it is. Oh, another overhand right, and the referee oh. jumps in. That's all she wrote. That's it. It's a matter of time. Diego Pacheco gets the eighth round stoppage. And I am not going to argue with that one because Abreu has been taking a good beating today. Yeah, I agree. Maybe not the best time to absolutely step yeah. in, but it was time. It was time. It was. You want to protect the young man who lose for the first time. So Diego Pacheco uh, gets the stoppage in the eighth round. He now 13 and 0. Referee Greg jumping in there. And let's look at the reset here. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Gerard White calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes.